up guys, welcome to the video. My name is Armon. If you are new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell and you'll stay up to date with all of my upcoming videos which are DJ tutorial videos, my own mixes and tips and tricks on how to DJ better. Um, the videos are generally aimed at beginner to intermediate level DJs who want to take their mixing up to the next level uh, or for those who, who need some basic skills if they're just getting started. Uh, so, I'm a Toronto-based uh, Deep House and Progressive House DJ. Uh, for that reason, my videos are focused on how to mix those styles of music uh, well, although a lot of these skills are transferable to, say, Tech House and Techno and some of the other forms of electronic music where the mixing style is comparable. So, in this video, we're not actually going to do too much mixing on the actual turntables today. This is a bit more of a theory or classroom DJ video that I've gotten some requests on uh, or requests to do this video for you guys. So what we're talking about here today is how to go about constructing a set. How do you build out your set? How do you select the next track? Uh, how do you build direction uh, for a DJ set? So now that varies uh, based on what kind of set you're playing. So we're going to talk generally today about three types of sets, and those include an opening set uh, in a club, uh, a headlining set that's going to be longer and later on at, at night when the club's busier and full, and we're also going to talk about a studio mix, which is a mix you record at home on your own, perhaps for promotion purposes or for a podcast or a guest mix on someone else's station, something like that. Uh, in that one you have more sort of creative control, uh, you don't have to worry about what the crowd is doing. And all of these um, three types of sets as well, well really the first two, not so much the studio mix, it's really going to depend as well on what the club is, what the audience is, what kind of music they're expecting to hear at this club, what kind of parties the promoters throw at those clubs, and uh, the time of your set as well as what other DJs are playing that same night as you. All of these things uh, have some impact on the kind of music uh, you should be playing and the style uh, of music that you may, or the direction you may want to take your set in. So more on that in a little bit. Uh, what I'm going to do to help you guys learn the concept around building out a set is in the second half of this video, I'm going to give you some examples of five types of songs. So what I'll do is I will play that song uh, digitally through my computer uh, and I will throw up a screenshot of the album art or the, or the track name or something from uh, perhaps from Rekordbox, the pioneer software that I use to organize my music. And uh, that will let you know who the artist is, uh, who, who the song is, what the song is, and also perhaps the beat per minute information, so the speed of the track, and perhaps the key as well. So um, we're going to talk later about five, five different types of songs. Uh, that it's good to think about them in these categories in order to think about what kind of song is this and what kind of direction is it going to push my set into, okay? So the five types of uh, tracks that we're going to go through are going to be uh, more introductory or slower speed, atmospheric, uh, chill type of tracks, kind of down-tempo tracks. So I'll, I'll just refer to those as <clears throat> atmospheric, uh, chill tracks. And then we're going to talk about uh, so the second type of track is called uh, tension builders, okay? Tracks that build up tension in the room, but they don't quite give you, you know, the big release of energy that the crowd may be anticipating. Uh, third type of track we're going to talk about, I call those energy builders, okay? These are songs that pick up the energy a level a bit. They're not too crazy, but they start to ramp things up, okay? Uh, fourth uh, song, the type of song that we're going to talk about is going to be songs that just kind of maintain the energy level. I call, I call those tracks chug-along tracks, right? They just, they've got a driving beat, but they don't do anything too crazy. If you want to just level, level things out for a while, I call those chug-along tracks. You just chug along. And then fifth and finally, of course, the most fun type of track to play that every DJ wants to play and when the club is full and, and people are really partying is uh, I call them energy release tracks or peak hour tracks. These are your tracks with um, big breakdowns, long breakdowns, uh, build-ups, uh, and huge drops with huge amounts of energy released at the drop. Okay, so 
I will later give you guys examples of each of these types of songs. Um, and, but before we do that, we should also talk now about the three types of sets. Okay, so uh, the live gig is probably uh, more interesting and of more concern to a lot of DJs who are at the intermediate level, who have done some mixes at their home already, uh, have put them up online or something, and now you're starting to play out live. So, um, opening sets, not always so popular because most DJs really want to play when the room is busy. However, I cannot stress enough the importance of playing a lot of opening sets because an opening set is actually extremely important to set the tone for the rest of the night and to set up the headlining DJ uh, into a proper and appropriate sort of energy level when they come on. So for those who may not know, most nightclubs, at least here in Toronto, will tend to open around uh, 10 p.m. and an opening set may go till about midnight, sometimes one in the morning. If you've got a headliner coming in to play an extended uh, set, like a three or four hour set, and sometimes there's special events and the clubs have uh, last call extended to 4 a.m. We're in Toronto, in Ontario, we only have last call to, till 2 a.m. Wham. All right, so we're trying to work on that. So anyhow, the opening DJ is very important because it, it gets the energy level going uh, in the right direction, but not too aggressively. I see this all the time and you'll see it with eager, you know, new DJs who it's, it's their first gig or it's one of their their first few gigs and they are really excited to play the music that they love and that they want to play and they've found some tracks that they, th they think are really great and they're uh, some of them though might be kind of what we call bangers they're too much energy uh, it's not usually appropriate to be playing techno banging away like dark hard techno at 126 BPM at 1030 when there's only like five bartenders in the room and maybe 10 people milling about chilling out at the bar getting drinks okay so you've got to play music that's appropriate for the room so typically and unless it's you know a designated techno party and you're supposed to be, everyone wants you to play techno the whole night I would start with something more melodic more chill like deep house I might start off playing as low as 118 per uh, beats per minute because you've got to think about uh, the speed and the energy level and on a shorter set like a one to two hour opening set typically you don't have time to do a lot of ups and downs that you might do to really venture around with a journey like you would in a longer set you have limited time so typically you're starting off slow letting people trickle into the room get a few people trying and this is your job drag a few people away from the bar over to the dance floor right so once the bars are busy enough you watch and see okay there's two or three people on the dance floor but uh, it's, people are starting to get, get into it, but you see people are clustered around the bar. Maybe you pick up the, the pace now with one of these energy raising type tracks that I mentioned, and you try and suck a few people more away from the bar, send them to the dance floor, right? And keep them moving. Um, dance floor retention is basically the name of the game. And it's, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. Um, easier said than done. So by the end of an opening set, you want to have picked it up a little bit but you want to exercise some restraint, right? Headlining DJs typically do not appreciate it when the DJ before them starts playing hard tracks with big breakdowns, buildups, and heavy drops, okay? Because they come in and now it's difficult for them to build up tension and get the crowd to the point where they really, really want it and you want to start releasing these high energy tracks. <clears throat> if, if the DJ comes into a situation where you've already been playing a lot of high energy tracks, it's like where do they have to go from there really, right? Um, also, the promoters hear this and uh, or other people in the club, you know, guests say, well, this person's playing really hard, fast music for early in the night. Guess what? You're, not, you're probably not going to get booked again, right? So it's part of the business side of DJing. It's keeping the promoters, uh, the nightclub owner, or manager uh, sometimes have influence on booking of DJs and of course the guests all happy and as well keep in mind too that in a lot of you know the underground music scene in terms of deep house tech house progressive house and techno most of the parties there's a lot of promoters in the crowd because it's like an industry related event right there's other promoters there's other DJs in the crowd so they have more of a critical ear than your average uh, party goer right so just keep that in mind so um, we've talked about the opening set a fair amount then. So to, to recap, uh, the name of the game is restraint, right? Less is more. Don't go too crazy. You know, start out slow enough. Keep things chill as people will flow in the door and then slowly pick it up. Um, but, you know, again, 
uh, less is more here and, and, and do exercise some restraint and you will have a happy headlining DJ coming in where they can you know, pick it up from where you leave them at 121, 122 beats per minute, perhaps if it's a deep house or progressive house party, maybe 123 for tech house and maybe 124 BPM for techno. But you want to leave the headlining DJ a little bit of room to take things up a notch, right? And trust me, when you're the headlining DJ and you're on the other side of that coin, you will appreciate it when the opening DJ does a good job, warms the room up for you, leaves the crowd wanting more and ready to go. That's, that's the best situation. So, with that said, let's talk about the headlining set now, okay? You've got two or three or four hours and you have a big blank canvas in front of you, right? So here is where you have more creative control and you get to have those uh, peaks and valleys and the ups and the downs like a roller coaster ride. You can play music that's fast for a while, then chill things out a little bit, let people relax a little, and then you pick it back up again uh, you take it, the music to a darker place maybe for a little while and you make it a little weird around 3 a.m., right? You play your weird music. Um, it's The sky's the limit here. Uh, you can play a lot of heavier tracks with energy release too and really keep people moving. But you don't want to go for too long playing the exact t uh, same type of music, uh, even though people will continue probably partying if it's a lot of high energy music. But it is nice to give people some variety and don't let your sound get too stale, right? So what can you do? You, can, you don't necessarily have to slow down the actual beats per minute of the music, but you can play songs that are a little bit less busy, that don't have as much percussive elements in their beat, will have the effect of sounding a little slower. If you play a track at 122 BPM, but it has a lot of percussion and a lot of 16th notes, hits on the hi-hats or the drums, that track will actually have the impact of sounding quite fast. Right? Another thing you can do is uh, use a bit more effects, a little bit more control of uh, volume, for example. During breakdowns, I sometimes like to bring the volume down slowly and bring it back up to really accentuate the buildup and, and that swell. And I've heard other DJs do that when I'm in the crowd and I think it's effective. Uh, you can also use uh, key shifting. And when I say key, I mean the key the music is in uh, to change the vibe of your mix and the mood and emotion in the club. So. What do I mean by that? Okay, if you know a little bit about music theory, you may know that um, uh, keys for Western music and Western trained ears like ours, uh, the music sounds. Sorry, I assumed that everyone watching this video is North American. I guess it could be anyone in the world. But uh, North Americans and Western music, like Europe as well, have uh, ears that. Uh, we, we hear music in a, a major key and it sounds more pleasing or more sort of complete or correct to us, if you will. If you play a song in a minor key, minor keys have the effect of sounding more kind of evil or darker, right? Like in a movie soundtrack when the, when the killer comes in the room or there's something uh, really bad is about to happen, you typically hear music in a minor key, okay? And that's very intentional on the part of the score writers for the movies. So if you are playing uh, tracks, playing away at a, in a major key for a couple songs, then you decide you want to make things a bit darker and change the mood, kind of take people down that rabbit hole, you play a song in like A minor or D minor, okay, and it's going to sound a bit more uh, evil. Alright, so uh, with a headlining set, you've got all of these great possibilities. Um, plan it out a little bit, and here's my sort of best number one tip or trick for a headlining set. Uh, what I like to do is I will organize my, the music that I want to play that night. And here's a tip for any set, is have more music than the actual amount of time that you're gonna have to play for, okay? So an hour and a half set I find usually takes about 16 songs. You gotta keep in mind you lose time on either side of the song as you mix in and out. So a seven minute track becomes a four and a half minute track if you're doing pretty long mixes on either end. Um, and as well, you're not gonna play out, you're not gonna play every single song that you brought with you in that folder or if you're playing CDs or vinyls or whatever. You're not gonna play them all because they're just not gonna all fit in. So you have to have extra, okay? If you're going for a two hour set, you should bring four hours of music, I would say. Just go double and you'll probably be pretty safe. Um, as long as you have enough variety in there in terms of s types of songs, speeds, and key, all right? Um, so, uh, with that said, uh, the best way I've found to get organized is I'll create 
um, three folders once I have all my music. I'll make three folders and one of them is sort of uh, introductory beginning part of the set. Uh, second uh, folder is mid and third uh, folder is peak. So I have uh, the songs categorized by energy level and where I tend to want to fit them in in the set uh, in these three folders. And you can set them up how you want, but the point is to get a bit organized here. Don't just have one folder with like 40 songs in it. Break them down into three, maybe four subfolders in terms of the uh, types of music, the energy level, and you don't have to follow those uh, three folders, you know, for hour one is folder one, hour two is folder two, but at least you know where those different types of songs are housed and you can uh, then plan accordingly as you're going. If you want to find a song that's kind of a neutral energy level, like a chug along track, now it's in, okay, it's in folder two. You know to go there, you don't waste too much time uh, flipping around through your folders looking for uh, an appropriate song and you can focus more time on making sure in your headphones that you're going to do a good mix, uh, that it's going to mix well, it's not out of key, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, a couple other last pointers for headlining sets. Uh, I don't think I mentioned vocal tracks yet. Um, you know, vocal tracks can really get the crowd pretty engaged, I find, and um, you know, pay attention to that. If you've played for an hour without playing any vocals, maybe it's time you sprinkle in a couple, right? Uh, or maybe you don't like vocal tracks and that's intentional. But uh, the point is to pay attention and be alive to variety. And keep in mind that not everyone has exactly the same taste for your type of music as well. So people in the crowd, there's going to be people in the crowd who are going to like vocal tracks. You know, that's for sure at any club on any given night. So uh, that's sort of the lay of the land for the headlining tracks. And now we can talk a bit about the uh, studio mixes. Uh, Studio mixes is your sort of own creative canvas. You get to do whatever you want because there's no live audience there who's going to boo you if you suck <laughs> or if the type of music is just not you know, what they like. So do what you like. That's your chance to express yourself, a uh, chance to share with uh, online community or with your friends or your listeners uh, what it is that you really like to do and you can use these to uh, promote yourself, right? So um, one thing with those um, studio mixes is it can be fun to and you can have the opportunity to do something more interesting with the intro track and the outro track right so what I've sometimes done with my sets is with the intro sets I will or sorry the intro tracks I'll play I'll play something instrumental or something that's just vocals and uh, some nice harmonies and then slowly bring in a beat underneath that until uh, that track uh, fades away can use some echo to extend the sound of that and make it really coast into the, the second track. And then for the uh, outro track, it's nice to sometimes do something like it'll be at a faster speed, so it might be like a synth, a synth going on an arpeggio or something like that. I'll try and find some examples uh, for the second half of the video as well. But you know, a studio mix, I'd say less limitations, express yourself, and uh, certainly all the tips that I mentioned in the uh, with respect to opening sets and with respect to headlining sets are still applicable, but I think you have more liberty to do what it is that you really want to do as a DJ. So uh, don't be shy, enjoy. Um, okay, so there you go, the overview of the three different uh, set types. Now we'll cut away to uh, examining some examples of these five different types of songs, and I'll try and find some examples of like intro and outro songs at the end as well. So uh, give these a listen, uh, try and pay attention to what's happening in the song. I'll add some comments to help you, to help guide you. But this is where you kind of have to use your DJ and musician spidey senses, right? Because it can be kind of hard to hear what is, like, what is the soul of that song? What does this song uh, inspire? What does it feel like? What kind of energy level and vibe does it have? But it, the more you listen to music and the more you listen to other DJ's sets, you will start to notice these patterns and that you, there is a way to categorize these sets even though, or these tracks rather, even though this is, I understand, kind of a nebulous, uh, intangible thing. But with practice, it comes. So practice and enjoy. Let's check out some tracks. This is a perfect example of a nice chill out atmospheric track. Notice the smooth bass line, melodic, dreamy vocals, and relatively slow speed.
So with this track, notice the soft, gentle piano. The notes don't have too aggressive of an attack to them. They're rounded, got some dreamy uh, vocals, and even the hi-hats uh, are soft during the breakdown. They don't have too much treble, too much aggression to them. They're very, uh, very smooth. All of these things come together, make this track a very nice down-tempo, chilled-out track to build atmosphere. Now this track is a perfect example of a classic tension builder. Listen to that cheeky, provocative uh, bass swell that happens once every couple of measures. It sounds like it's going to do something nasty, but it just keeps going. The vocals are kind of mysterious sounding, and this track has all of the elements necessary to start getting people excited, to start to dance more, but it never quite really peaks and gives it to them. this track a tension building track too, mostly because of this very pensive and driving synthesizer melody. When you listen to this it just sounds like it might and maybe should do more, but it just doesn't and therein lies the tension. This track is a really great example of an energy raising track. It's got a groovy, bouncy bass line that just pushes things forward. It's 123 beats per minute, which is the perfect speed for a little energy boost, and it lets the listeners know that things are about to move forward. This track here is a bit on the darker sounding side, arguably could be kind of a tension building track as well, but it's got a pretty uh, gritty bass line with some bite to it that really drives things forward. I think you could use this track to pick up the pace a bit and kind of foreshadow that more energy is about to come. Here is one of your chug-along tracks. This song has a playful bass line, but a fairly chill, not too excited vocal melody. Along with this playful, kind of teasing synthesizer melody that bounces up and down, this track isn't too dark or too pensive, so it's not a tension building track, but I'd say it's a chugging along, kind of maintain the energy level track. Again, we've got a playful, bouncy bass line, coupled with a kind of twangy, driving uh, guitar melody, but the track is not too heavy, so it doesn't really push your mix either up or down in either direction, it just maintains. This should be self-explanatory. You've got an epic build-up here, huge drop in energy release. Uh, you can always count on Jeremy Olander to give it to you like this for a heavy progressive house track.
done, this is self-explanatory. You play this on a dance floor at 2 in the morning after you make people wait for it for a while, they will lose their minds.